G'day Mr Fitz here, hope you're going well. This is the third video of our rack and pinion project. This last little video is going to show us how to assemble, check and finalise our designs so then we can send them off for 3D printing. Okay, you built your rack, beautiful. Just remember in the last video, um, the first video to um, rename your part in here as well. So call this one the rack, that's going to help us with our assembly. Okay, so over to our assembly, click down the bottom here. This will load up the assembly area. Now this is basically an area where we're going to put parts together and we can check their fit. This is quite simple. Click insert. We're going to start with our rack. So click on there. Just place it out on the screen. And also our pinion. Click and place it out here. Click on the tick to finish it. So you can see here these are our two parts and we want to put them together so we can check that they fit okay. Now Best thing to do, if you click and drag, you can move these objects. Now, I want to fix the rack in this particular instance. So if you just click on the rack, you'll notice over here, you can turn it off. If I right click and go fix, or you can do that on the part, fix and unfix, that just stops that from moving. Now you notice the gear moves, no problem. Right, we want to rotate this just for the sake of that view. So if I click on this shape, you can see that this little triad pops up, you can move this X and Y. Um, if you click on the end of an axis, so here, this little dude here allows me to spin it. So I'm going to rotate that 90, so that now looks pretty cool. It's up there, I can move this around, it's now on the same axis as my rack. Alright, I'm going to apply a constraint, so across here these are what we call mate constraints, there's a whole range of these. Um, I'll save for another video to teach you more about them, but today we're just going to use a planar mate. This just makes two faces on the same plane. So click on that one. Um, I'm going to choose the face. Just click on the face here of the pinion and then click on the face of the rack. You can see that that puts those two on the same face. That's what I want, even though they kind of crash together, that's okay. Just click on the tick to finish that. Now, if you click and move the pinion now, what you'll notice is it stays on that face, which is what I want. Cool. Now, ordinarily, I could spend a lot more time to um, fix this gear and work out how I could make them actually touch. But all I'm going to do here is actually just move the gear so you can see how this is going to interact with the rack. Now, if you imagine if this gear was rotating clockwise, or actually, in this case, yeah, clockwise, I can basically put these two faces together. So imagine this gear crashing into the rack. It's going to push that tooth to the left, and then this gear is going to come down and push the next tooth to the left. Now you can see here that actually go together, like I put them together there, looks quite nice. Once these touch, that's going to also work, but you can see that they're actually going to crash a little bit here. So that might jam a little bit. Um, I think it'll be okay though, because what will happen is that'll end up hitting there before that hits against that face. Anyway, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. But what I'm going to do to make this better is that if I can put a, a radius or a fillet on the edge of this tooth and probably also the leading tooth of my pinion, they're just going to roll a bit nicer and not have that sharp edge smacking against that face. So the way I do that, I'm going to go back into my pinion gear, Part Studio 1. I'm going to add a fillet. Now from memory, the tooth was extrude two, that's that one there. I'm going to chuck a fillet on this edge and also this edge. So that's the fillet tool. You can see it just radiuses the edge. One mil is probably okay as the default there. I'm just going to click on the tick to approve it. That looks good. That's what I want. Now I want this on all of the teeth. So I could sit there and spend forever trying to find all those edges, but this program is a bit more intelligent than that. You can see the filler is sitting here in the feature tree. Now what I can do, this circular pattern took that original tooth and spun it around the part. I want to do the same with this fillet. However, what I need to do is I need to put this fillet before the circular pattern. This pattern finds things before it was created. So what I can do is if I click and drag this fillet feature, I can move this up, up, up before the circular pattern. Now, if I try and go beyond feature two, it's not going to work. It gives me an error because it can't actually find that tooth. The tooth only existed after extrude two. So put it after tooth. There we go. 
All right, go back into circular pattern. I'm going to edit this. Now up in here, when it says features to pattern, it's going to ex move extrude two, which is the tooth. I click in there, I can also add, by clicking on it, the fillet and click on the tick and you'll see that that fixes that up beautifully, nice. Let's check back to our assembly. You can see now that's done the, the pinion gear. I'm gonna also do it to the rack. So part studio two is my rack. That's the first tooth I built. Let's put a quick fillet on there and there. Both two edges, one mil is good enough. As before, I need to reorder this, drag it before the pattern, right click, edit the pattern, and add that to the pattern. And you'll see that it'll fix all the teeth along there. Click on the tick, done. Now, if I go back to my assembly, let's check the update. Beautiful, have a look at this. Now you see when this tooth crashes into here, this tooth's gonna now roll itself around that radius. So as this next one comes through and engages with this tooth, it's gonna be a nice smooth transition. You always want radiuses hitting against faces, not sharp corners. Beautiful, I'm really happy with that. That's gonna work really nicely. So I can now go and 3D print these parts. Um, I did for some reason make my rack thicker than my pinion. Must have changed the thickness somewhere. But anyway, double check all your dimensions, make sure you're happy with it. Um, make sure that your length and everything are okay. Once you're done with that, what we can do is go back to, actually I can do it in my assembly. If I find my body, so my um, rack for example, I can go to my rack and I'm going to go right click and export to export my rack. Now the file format that I need for 3D printing is called an STL format. So it actually comes up with that by default, but you can click here and choose an STL. Um, as far as the settings, make sure millimeters is collected. Um, the resolution is the quality of it. Make sure it's fine um, and then go export. And that should download it. So it should ask you where you want that to go. Save this onto your computer in a folder, give it a name. So this is Part Studio Rack, no problems. Um, I'm gonna save mine into a folder on my downloads for 3D print. And I'm gonna save that one, so that's my rack. And I'm gonna also right click export STL, that's all fine, and export my pinion. So rack and pinion. I save them now as an STL file. I can now take that into a separate software called Cura, which I'm gonna to use to um, essentially configure my 3D printer. So that's another video. Um, that's all from today. What we've done is we have completed our assembly. We've checked the fit of our rack and our pinion. We've added some fillets to try and make a smooth transition of our gears. And I'm pretty confident now if I print this and assemble it, when this pinion rotates, it should smoothly push my rack left or right, depending on the direction of my gear rotation. Cool, see you next video.